Hey, what's going on everyone? Clarence Langston here, husband, father, and spiritual mentor. My passion is to help pull purpose out of God's people, and my goal is to get you fulfilled in faith, your family, your finances, and your future. Today I'll be talking about how to create a calm and peaceful home. What does a calm, peaceful home look like? You may be asking, you know, so many people are dealing with so many different elements when it comes to their family life. You know, I've learned over the years that many of us, we don't even really live in a home environment. We kind of self-exist in a house, a place that has a four walls, a roof, a front door and a back door and some windows. And we all kind of just kind of reside there. But a home is a place where, uh, man, there's family activity, there's warmth, there's love, um, there's um, friendly environment, support system. You know, when I think about a home, those are the things that I think about. You know, a place that I can go to where I can get my rest, number one. Number two, I can find support. Uh, the people that love me and support me, um, they're there. Uh, a place of renewal. You know, not just resting, but a place where I can be regenerated, where I can be added to. And, you know, you know, that's what a home is. And many people haven't experienced a home life. They don't even know how to build or establish a home life. And that was one of the things for me. You know, I thank God uh, for my mom. I grew up in a single uh, home with uh, my mom and uh, my uncles uh, from time to time would be there. But we had an environment where I believe we were kind of, you know, surviving, you know, uh, for two years, we're living in one space and place. Another three years later, we could be staying somewhere else and meeting new friends in that community and then moving again. So there was really no stability. And I know some of you can relate to it. Some of you may be able to say, hey, I lived in the same house for 20 years, but it was still a house. There was no warmth there. There was no environment for my growth. It wasn't real support. Um, it wasn't a loving atmosphere, but it was a place um, that we all grew up in. My parents were there. There, um, but I didn't realize how much I did not have um, that peace or that love or that support. You know, when I think about a home and I think about family, you know, I can't think about family without thinking about home. And I don't think about home without thinking about family. And I'm not just using that word family uh, as a general statement of facts. You know, all of us come from a family. All of us have family. And when I say that word family, some of you think, man, man, I had a bad situation with my family. I had a good situation uh, with my family, but I didn't have a support system with my family. We have different experience and backgrounds um, when it comes to the word family. But as we really target, you know, um, this, this space, this environment, um, that I believe that God created when he created family, um, that place that we call home, what does that look like for you? What, what is that like uh, for you? What has that been like? And where would you like to be now um, as you are, have learned over the years that you haven't always felt the support or the quality of love or that environment um, that would have been conducive for your growth uh, to allow you to have a space to grow in to be able to be all that God has purposed for you to be. How to create a calm and peaceful home? How do I do that? That may be the thing that everyone is asking right now. I'm so glad that you asked because there are necessary steps that have to be taken um, to be able to create an environment you know, of warmth. So the first thing you want to do is create a calming atmosphere. What does that consist of? What does that look like? What does your morning routine look like? Well, one of the things that... I've done in my own home, my own personal space, is that in the morning in my home, you know, I normally get up and I have my time of prayer, my time of meditation, and my time of worship. And I cut on worship in, the, in, in my home. I have a what's called a um, stereo system that plays in all of the rooms in my home. And so I can create the atmosphere of worship. And I c normally cut that on in the morning. So before I wake up my children, before I wake up my wife, I've I've created that atmosphere. So that's what works for me so that my children, when I go to wake them up, normally I try to make sure I don't cut on the lights. I try to come in and gently, I may lay next to them and whisper in their ear and rub on their cheeks or hug on them. I do the same thing with my wife. And then I kind of get them up and we get started in our day. So there is a calming atmosphere. It's not a, it's not a rushed atmosphere. Uh, I try to make sure there's, there's not fussing in the morning. And, you know, because sometimes children are moving so slow, they get my wife all upset and they get me upset. And I try to remind myself that I want them 
how we leave our home. I want our continual day to be a place of calmness. And I believe that we get that from the space um, that we live in. And so how we leave that space, I believe, determines how our day will go because we create our own energy. So I'm really big on creating um, the energy and the synergy in my home um, that will cause all of us to be nourished there, all of us to feel safe there. And it's a space that we're able to love each other and groom each other to be able to know who we are before we leave outside of those doors. So that's really big for me. So I'm intentional on how uh, uh, I allow everyone to wake up in our home. So uh, those are several steps that I take um, in the morning. And then I'm a part of my children's life even throughout the day as um, God has blessed me to be able to get up and then take them to school. We have prayer in the vehicle uh, on our way to school. And over the years, my children, they're 11 now. Now they know how to pray and they also know why we pray and they know the power of prayer because they've seen us do it for so long. And then I show them how God has blessed us and how God keeps us and how when you allow God to be a part of your day and a part of your life, it will keep you calm and it'll keep you in perfect peace. Matter of fact, it's so funny that I'm sharing this today because the other day I was teaching my children a lesson in the car and I was saying, now look guys, uh, when you pray, it's about a relationship with God. So inviting God into that environment, into that house, because that's all it is. It's just a shell and it's what you make it. It's how you create that atmosphere. And so inviting God into that atmosphere creates an atmosphere of love because we know there's three kinds of love. You know, you have filial love that's based on feelings and we don't always feel good. There's eros love that's based on intimacy between a husband and a wife, and that's not always there. But God's agape love is a continual love. It's an unrestricted love, and it's a love that we give one another in spite of our differences. And so, you know, I found out, you know, I have three children. Each one of my children are different. Um, I have a wife. My wife is, is different from each one of my children, and then I'm completely different. But the thing that we have that is a common denominator in our home is the fact that we love each other. And so that's one of the things that I make sure that we really institutionalized in our home is that we share that love. And I'm not talking about a love because we feel good about one another all the time, but it's because we love each other with the God kind of love. And so that kind of environment is really amazing because I found out that even when I leave that particular structure that we call home, again, that's just the house. Home is where the heart is. And where the heart is, is where the home is. So I've taught my children that when you go to school, you still bring your home with you because you have the support of mommy and daddy. You have the support of your siblings. And so no matter who supports you, no matter who accepts you, you are accepted and you are loved. So even while they're at school, they're at home. When we're in the car, we're at home. When I go to the gym or to the office, I'm always at home because we've created a space in our lives that give us the support that we need to conquer in life. And that's what I want to give you today. I want you the takeaway to be today, how to be able to create an atmosphere in your house that makes it a home no matter where you go and you can carry it and be a partaker of that strength called love that'll cause you to be complete in every environment. The next thing you want to do is set boundaries around work, school, other responsibilities so that we can prevent burnout and being overwhelmed. It's so easy to be overwhelmed with life. So many things going on um, from school to work, um, other activities, after school activities, sports that the children may be in, different things that you're doing, different uh, streams of income or jobs you may be working to provide for your family. So how, how do I allow what I've created in my home space to be able to be carried through in every area of my life so I don't create burnout. Man, this is so important that we are intentional. That was one of the things that I had to learn to do in my life uh, because I was doing so much and I was giving out so much that many times by the time I would get home, I didn't want to be bothered. <laughs> I didn't want the children calling my name. I didn't want my wife calling my name because I would be burnt out. I would have given to everyone 
even the part that is just left for me and my family. So one of the things I had to learn how to do is be able to departmentalize. This is so important to departmentalize so that you're not giving all of you to any particular area of your life, but you're able to allow those areas to just be different extensions of yourself that you're able to give out proportionately. So when I go to work, there, whatever assignment that is that I'm doing for that day, I have already accounted for it. I've already allowed the time and the space that I'm going to need to be able to do that. And when I do it, I do it with the expectation that that particular area is now taken care of without me overextending myself from taking from my relationship with my wife or overextending myself, taking my relationship away from my children. So it, it, you have to really be intentional and have targeted goals and be able to target your day, be able to target your week and be intentional. When you're intentional, it becomes much easier than it sounds right now. So I don't want you to be overwhelmed with what I'm sharing, but it is important that you hear because if you don't hear, then you won't know to do. But now that you're hearing, you'll know to do. And by the time we get through today, the takeaway, you will be able to go and actually execute in your own personal life. And so those are one, those are many of the things that I do to make sure that I understand that what I have at home, what, what I have with my family, this is where I draw my strength from. This is where my children draw their strength from. This is where my wife draws her strength from. So it's important that we keep that set apart from everything. Nothing else is as important as your home life. So maybe you're a single person. You say, well, what do you do if you don't have a children or you're not married yet? Well, that is your space where you unwind. That's your private place. That is your paradise. That's your garden. And you don't let anything disturb that. So you have to, even if you work from home, you create a space in your home for work, but you don't allow that space to become a part of your home. It is just where you go to accomplish goals. But when you come out of that space, this space is where you draw your energy, you draw your strength, you draw love, you draw compassion, and this is where you enjoy life, is in that place called home. Then what you wanna do, you have to encourage an open line of communication, but respect at the same time. We all live in the same space, we're all in the same place, most of the time, by the evening, at the same time. So how do we come together, still create a positive energy, a loving energy, and allow each other our own space yet while we come together. Well, man, this is one of the things that I do in our home. We really have a rhythm uh, that we've created and you create your own rhythm. That looks different for everybody. Uh, but our children, they get out of school. We pick them up from school. Uh, we're always interested in their day. So by the time they walk out of school, I make it my business to the best of my ability. Now, sometimes I've, I have not always kept this rule, but for the majority I do. I'm going to give them my undivided attention because it's about them. So when that car door is open, when that car door opens up, hey, you know, hey, John, man, how was your day today? John's normally the first one to get in the car. He's usually the first one out. And uh, hey, John, how was your day today, man? Did anything interesting happen? I'm, I'm starting a dialogue. I'm starting a dialogue. I want to hear what's in their mind, what's in their heart. Hey, my other son gets in the car. Hey, Josh, how was your day? Now we're sharing. Most of the time, children start asking for stuff a few minutes after that. Daddy, can we go here? Daddy, can we do this? And they already, they already kind of know the rule of engagement. We're going to go home and we're going to do some reading. Uh, we're going to look at your homework. If you have any homework, do you have an exam? So we're, we're very specific. We're, we're interested in their education. We're interested in their day. We're a family. We make school and education also a part of our family, a part of our home, uh, because we want to make sure that they're smart, they're intelligent, they're good in good grades, and we're being good parents. So that's the first thing that we do because it's fresh on their mind. So when we get home, you know, and every now and again, uh, we'll go outside of that perimeter and we may stop at the gas station and get some slushies or something fun that they want to do. But they know even after we do that, we still have a rhythm. So we normally we go home and they may grab a snack and then we'll get to that homework so we can just get it done. And then they'll go in their own space. They may go get on a computer, play some video games. Uh, one may be 
over in the corner on TikTok. He's in his space. Uh, my, my other son is in his space. Uh, I told you my daughter, she's away at school, so she's not there right now. Um, me, and, and me and my wife, either we're together talking or we're in our own space. But at dinner time, we all come together. We don't eat dinner and, you know, one is in this room eating and another one is in their bedroom eating. Uh, no, majority of the time we know that our family time together where we share our own emotions. Hey, well, how you feeling today? What's going on with you, dad? What's going on with you, mom? So we've done this for so long that the children, they engage us the same way we engage them now. You know, it, it's really amazing. Sometimes we're sitting there eating and, and they're sharing. And all of a sudden, one of my sons may say, hey, dad, you know, how was your day today? You know, how did anything interesting happen? So they've learned over time to be interested in our day and our lives as much as we are theirs. And so it's it's it was intentional. It was by design the way um, God gave it to me. And God really gave it to me because I asked God, you know, the Bible says you have not. Uh, because you ask not. And I ask God uh, because I want a specific design for my home to be able to create that kind of atmosphere. So that's what we do um, at dinner time. And then we normally uh, will do this. So if my wife cooks, uh, you know, I may help start with the children doing the dishes or if I cook, vice versa. But we're always together in the kitchen and we don't believe in eating and leaving the table. You know, we're still there if other people are still eating. So that helps us not to even rush eating because we're going to spend quality time. I want somebody to say it with me. Quality time, not rush time. It's not a time to stuff and eat. This is a time to enjoy eating, enjoy family, enjoy fellowship. And then after that, we begin to do the dishes together. And then everyone kind of break off and they're going their own space. They may watch a, a basketball game or a movie uh, before they get ready to lay down to go to bed. And they'll have a shower and uh, we'll put them to bed. So me and my wife, we're, one of us are always putting them to bed. Uh, they're, they're, they're such creatures of habit. Once you create that family atmosphere in that home, they always want both of us to show up in that room. We don't always have to be there together. But if I'm in there putting them to bed or making sure they're closing down and shutting down in their room, uh, they're going to, they go, once I get them in bed, they're going to say, all right, daddy, give us a kiss, pray with us. Can you go get, tell mommy, we want to see her come give us a good night kiss. So there's a rhythm. So you have to, it's an, an intentional rhythm. And one of the things I miss saying is one of the other parts of our day, when I wake them up after they uh, get dressed in the morning and brush their teeth, they never leave their bedroom without making up their bed. So you never want to create a mess in your space that you have to come back to that's not in order. So that's one of the things we all do in my home. When we leave our space, it's made up. So when we come back home, it's a space that we can enjoy. So um, man, those are just some of the, the key nuggets that we do and that we implement in our home from family time to how we treat one another, how we respect the space that we're in. But again, teaching that self-worth is everything you have to teach it to your children but you have to have it for yourself and you also have to have it for your mate because with the family there's so much pull from each person it's easy for somebody to get missed and no one no two people are the same so creating family atmosphere having that home and paying close attention and giving attention to one another it's everything and once you do that you're going to always be consumed with one another you can't wait to see one another you can't wait back to get uh, uh wait to get back to each other because there's nothing like that home life at home these are the steps of creating a calm and peaceful home man how many of us want a calm and peaceful home sometimes we're so used of the eradicalness of life that we bring it into our own space and we don't realize we don't have a space of peace. Some people try to travel the world to find it. They go on vacation to find it. But the truth is, if you don't have it at home in your heart, if you don't have it in the space that you live in, nine times out of 10, you won't carry it with you. So you won't be able to bring it back with you because there's nothing there in you. Home is not just a house or a building or a space that we're in, but home is a space that we share with ourselves, with God and the people that we love to create a synergy and an energy of warmth that causes all of us to be strong enough to endure any and everything that life may bring. I'm so glad to be able to share these takeaways with you today because I know as you walk 
the destiny that God has for you. And as you walk in the space and time that's been designed by God, I know that the family life and the home life that is now in your heart and will soon be as you walk off these principles will only cause you to grow stronger and wiser. You know, one of the things that God tells us is that when we put him first, that all these other things will work in our favor. And I wanna share that with you. One of the things that I've done that have held my family together, that have caused me to be able to create that home and that significant space that we share so intimately together is because we allow God to come into our heart and teach us the power of family. Listen, you're my family. I pray I'm a part of your family now. Let's begin to operate in these principles. I want the takeaway to be, it's time to build my home.